Hey guys, welcome back. Those of you that caught my last video are going to consider this video one of those which you call the least surprising sequel ever video. Once again, I'm back under the hood of the old Jeep because last time we put a brand new starter in there only to find that it was actually the alternator was bad. Now, spoiler alert, you'll have to go back and watch that video to learn how I got to that point. But to my credit, it wasn't just the alternator that was bad. It was the tool I was using to determine the voltage that was bad first. That led me to buying a starter. Anyway, I got a new starter in. I like it. It works great. Alternator's bad. It was the old school, it had an old GM alternator from way back when somebody had adapted it, but with an external voltage regulator, it was no good. So anyway, I got rid of it. And I just picked up a, just a standard generic GM alternator that's called, it said it was a one wire alternator, but it, it's not. I got to hook up some other wires, but that's easy. We can do it. Because in the process of doing that, I'm going to fix a whole bunch of other wiring in this thing. So, let's get to it. Okay. To put this alternator in, it's basically the same as the one that came out of there. It's just a pretty standard GM alternator. Uh, I did have to replace my pulley, and to do that, I just took the old one, put my impact wrench on it, zipped it off. The pulley came right off on my new one, Z zipped it on there, gave it about one, two, three seconds of ugga duggas, and that's about how good it is torqued on there, and that's gonna stay. Now I gotta do some wiring, but to get into this wiring, uh, and do it right, I'm going to eliminate one other thing that I have going on this old Jeep. And that's this. It is my amp meter, or it shows the amps being charged, charging or not charging in the Jeep. And an amp meter is more accurate, probably, than what I'm going to replace it with, which is a voltmeter. Because it's pretty easy, right? Battery's charging, it's over here. Battery's not charging, it's over there. Pretty easy to look at. The problem is, to get that thing to work right, you either have to complicate the wiring a little bit more than I want to have done with the resistor and whatnot, or you have to run some pretty heavy duty gauge wiring uh, in through the firewall to that gauge and back out. In fact, that's what these two wires are right here, my ammeter wires, which kind of causes a, ah, it could be a threat of a, a fire hazard, right? It's a lot of current running through there just to, just to get to know the state of my battery. So in order to fix that problem, I went on the old, uh, either Amazon or eBay, somewhere on the old interwebs, and I picked up the one of the cheapest voltmeters I could find. Uh, it was about 10 bucks. Okay, if you're wondering why I'm getting rid of my ammeter, this is why right here. So off of the alternator, one arm of that went in, and I, I don't think it's original, but this is how it was set up. One arm went in, and tied on one side of the ammeter and then off the other side it came back through this heavy gauge wire all up under the dash through the firewall back down to the starter post which is connected to the battery post which charged the battery so i'm gonna just way simplify that if you notice here this other wire that tees off which is pretty hammered and needs uh, some work comes off the alternator and that goes up and it ties in underneath the dash on the headlight switch. There's a big circuit breaker there for the main wire that comes in. And that's what powers all the accessories. It powers the everything under the dash. We'll leave that as is. Actually, I'll fix it a little bit to get rid of that bare spot. Uh, but we'll run our power back like that. But instead of having my power go all the way up through there into an ammeter and back just to charge my battery, I'm going to tie off right here. Tee it off and go basically straight from my alternator to this post on the battery which will uh, charge, or post, excuse me, to this post on the starter, which charges my battery. And that's just gonna simplify things a whole lot more. All right, guys. So I was actually editing this video, and I realized this part of how the alternator's hooked up, I didn't explain very well originally. And this is probably actually something that's useful to people, especially if you're gonna use just your standard, generic, three-wire GM alternator. So. Pay attention, here we go. I'm gonna do my best to explain how to hook up your three wire, three wire alternator. It's easier to do than it is to say. Okay, standard GM three wire alternator. Okay, can you see it? Okay, good. Here's your main post. 
this is what's going to obviously charge your uh, battery. This wire goes off to wherever it goes off to to charge. In my case, it just runs over here and it splits. It goes back to my inside the cab of the vehicle and then jumps comes right down here to the starter where it ties into my main starter wire to the battery. That's how it charges the battery. These other two, this is where the magic happens, okay? We'll start with this other wire, the number two post. If you look at the back of the alternator, it's on the right, number two. This is your voltage regulator feedback wire, okay? This wire tells you how much alternate how much output the alternator is giving and then talks to the regulator and says whether to put out more or to put out less. It's very simplified in this case. It just ties right here to the post and it measures the voltage right here. We're going to come back to that wire in a minute. This second wire, the number one post, this thing goes back to keyed power somewhere in the vehicle so that when the you turn the key on, this is hot because this is your exciter wire for the alternator. This is the one that, that uh, completes the circuit in here and says charge, start charging, okay? Now, let's talk about the nuances of each of these wires. First off, we'll start with the exciter wire, okay? If you mess up on this thing, because the way it works is it's grounded right now, it has hot coming in and it's grounded. Once this thing starts spinning, it no, it loses its ground and it tells it that, you know, the magic tells the thing start charging, okay? Now, the nuances with that wire are, are this. If you hook that thing up, uh, for example, in this Jeep, if I just ran that back and ran it to the ignition side of my switch, or if I just wanted to be real simple and came off of the, the keyed side of my coil wire, which I could do, and it would send a signal. The problem is, there's now uh, that wire, once you, it starts, once you turn the power on and you start spinning this thing up, it's a completed circuit. And if I run it in the instance of running on my ignition side, I can turn my key off and it's still getting power back through that wire and the, the vehicle will continue to run on. Okay, so there's two ways to fix that. Very easily, you could just run to the accessory side of your ignition switch, right? Use your exciter wire, go to the accessory side or something that is no longer powering the ignition side of the vehicle uh, when the key is off. Or you could put a light in here. Okay, and that's what a lot of people do. This is actually your dummy light, okay? So if your car's wired correctly, uh, like the vehicle that this alternator would have come on originally, you would go back to the gen light or the alt light in your dash, right? So you can, you can build that by just putting anywhere in line. Like even if I wanted to run this wire right off my coil for the exciter power, I could just put right in here just a, just a light bulb. I don't know if an LED bulb will work if it pulls enough, but I could just put a regular little tail light bulb interior light or something. And what happens is I turn my key on, that light comes on because it's grounded inside here. Once we start spinning this alternator, it goes complete. There's no longer ground there, so that light will go out. If my alternator quits charging for some reason, that ground is reconnected and that light will come on, hence the dummy light. Okay, second wire we're going to talk about here, the feedback. This thing is pretty key if you run a lot of accessories on your vehicle, speakers, amps, that kind of stuff. You can run that voltage regulator feedback wire back to the main circuit in your vehicle. In this Jeep, that would be maybe where my main wire goes into charge, which is on the headlight relay. Makes sense? That way any voltage drop is measured at that point and the alternator makes up for it by putting out more power. There you go. That's how you set up a GM three-wire alternator, quite simply. They're very universal, easy to use, great for hot rods or old Jeeps like this. Hope that helped. Why does it seem like wiring jobs just always take forever? Well, it's done. It's set up. All I've, I, I shouldn't get ahead of myself. I learned before. But I have it hooked up. I haven't tested it yet. Alternator's wired. I did a good soldered all this and shrink wrapped it around there so my main wire off of the alternator charges my battery by going to the starter and then it's my main hot wire going in to the cab where I have my new volt uh, meter mounted and then it's just off a of switched power I had to run it off a of switched power and I mean it's, it's always a mess okay and if you're an astute watcher, you're going to notice my voltmeter's upside down. And that's intentional. 
because when I sit in the seat and drive and look down, if I put it right side up, you can't see any of the numbers. It's such a deep gauge. It's set so far back in. So I went over, I went for function over form on this one. Put it in upside down so I can see, and honestly, I wish I'd done the same thing with my water temperature when I put that in, because up here in the important numbers, you can't see what it is. You have to duck down and this giant wheel doesn't let you look around here to see what they are. But anyway, it's in. Oh, I'm gonna clean up a mess. I'm gonna get the keys. And then we're gonna come back out. We're gonna smoke test this thing and hopefully have it, the electrical sorted out once and for all. All right, smoke test seems to work all right. As you can hear, it's running, fired right off. Nothing's on fire here, making smoke. My battery's showing. Oh, 13 and a half volts. That's pretty good. Let's check it down here at the back of the alternator. Okay. She seems to be charging pretty good. Now let's step inside the rig and check out our voltmeter. The upside down voltmeter confirms. 13 and a half volts. Oh, what a pain that turned out to be. But now I'm happy because I know my electrical system works. It's not gonna leave me stranded, knock on wood. But I got a starter that works, it's new, it's reliable, it's something I can afford to replace when it does go out. Same with the alternator, easy, generic, GM three-wire alternator. All right, if you like what you see, make sure you hit subscribe and then make sure you click one of the videos that's gonna pop up on the screen here in a minute. You can follow along on more adventures of buffoonery as I work on my old rigs. Uh, now that I think about it, I probably shouldn't have done that. Whatever, it'll always have a light on it. How's that sound? Uh, until the light burns out and then it won't have a light in it and nobody will care because none of the other lights work in any other of my gauges, so whatever.